listener, Bobby Leach, SouthwestSportsNest.com. Let's talk about the Plainfield North Tigers 2012 football squad. Will they reach the playoffs this season? Absolutely. But before we get to that point and I justify my case, let's turn the clock back a little bit, go back to 2011, and look at what their record was last year at 5-4. and four. They came off uh, the field on Week 9. Heads hung a little bit low, rightfully so. I mean, there's an expectation at Plainfield North to reach the playoffs every year. Nobody goes into that program thinking that they're not going to meet, you know, reach the playoffs. Last year, they got stunned a little bit. There were a couple of close games that I think that they gave away mistakes, uh, uncharacteristic mistakes of a team that's pretty well disciplined and and, and knows what they're supposed to be, but youthful mistakes. Some of it's timing, some of it's luck, some of it's you know bad luck, you know, for that matter. But the reality is, is that they did not make the playoffs last year, and that really sunk into this football team in the off season. You know, you got a large group of kids that uh, are coming back from that team last year. And they've spent their time in the weight room. They've spent their time in the classroom. They've listened to Coach Kane and Coach Darlington and the rest of the coaches really push them hard. And, you know, I saw this past Friday night a, a group of kids that are just determined to prove that they're better than a 4-5 and five team. And you know why they can do that? Because 19 of those kids are coming back. And that's why I think predominantly that that Plainfield North is going to see the playoffs. I don't think they're going to see the playoffs. I think they're going to I think they're going to smoke a lot of teams this year. I think they're that good. Um, you know, and what gives me that confidence in this in this ball club is simply the fact that they're a unit. They've been together a long time. They're they're a talented unit. I mean, look at Jay Roberts for instance. I mean, Jay Roberts is a stud. I mean, I've talked about him leading up to this season for the last 6 weeks. And I stand behind what I'm saying about this kid. This kid's a stud. He's going to put up, last year he put up 1,200, 1,300 yards, something like that for the Tigers as a junior. This year he is bigger, he's a heck of a lot stronger, and he's a lot more confident. I mean, he's got offers right now waiting for him for baseball. He can go baseball if he wants to go baseball. But I think in his heart he really wants to play football. And he's a great football player. And, you know, I asked him in my interview that you guys will you'll see and, and, and hear his uh, response to this, but I asked him, you know, at the college level, do you want to play football and baseball? And he's absolutely. I mean, this, this guy's like a Bo Jackson kind of good for his age. That's how good he is. He's, he's, a, he's really strong. He's not maybe as, as fast as a, a Ty Isaac. He's certainly not as, I guess, built the same way, maybe as slender. He's much more stockier. That means he could take that hit. If linebackers come to hit him, he isn't going to be taking the hit. He's going to be giving you the hit. You know, this kid can this kid can run. He's got some field vision. He's got some speed. He's got a nice stiff arm. He understands the plays, and the team is confident in him. Coaches are confident in him. So look for Jay Roberts to be their horse this year. But when you take your eyes off of Roberts and and, and look at the rest of this, this offense, it's amazing. I mean, Kurt Palandak could be, you know, I've said before, I think the kid over at Romeoville, uh, Jake Bambiel, he could be a really good quarterback this year. You know what? So can Palandek. I mean, Kurt is uh, a second-year starter at varsity. His brother held that position before him. So there's a good pedigree there at the quarterback spot. There's a comfort level from the coaching staff. There are some great things about Kurt. Kurt can run. I mean, he's shifty. I I mean, I don't think they like to run him a whole lot, uh, largely probably due to the fact that they don't have a, a, a great backup. I didn't get to see their backup, by the way, and he isn't too bad. But... You know, uh, there's a confidence there in in Kurt, so you don't want to maybe run him as much as you as you'd like because you just don't want to see the kid take a shot and and to be out of the game and maybe change the fortunes of that game. So I think you know, uh, Palandek. The other thing, he's really mature, mature beyond his years. I mean, you know, he, you get him in a huddle, he's not going to get rattled. He's not going to get shook up. He's disappointed about last season too. You know, this is his senior year, and he wants to go out on a bang. I just don't think you're going to see a lot of this football team lay down. There are other kids like Brett Fox. And Brett, I know you're out there. And Brett used to play for me. I remember when he was a little kid out there and, and, and slugging it away. Well, you know what? He's been slugging it away on varsity for three seasons. Three seasons at defensive line. They moved him out to linebacker this year. And let me tell you, talk about bigger, stronger, faster. Either I'm just getting older, fatter, and dumber. You know? but And that's probably, a lot of that's probably true. But... You know, you look at Fox, and he is bigger, he's faster, and he's stronger. And, you know, he's another diamond in the rough. There's a lot of diamonds in the rough here at Plainfield North that you just aren't seeing. You're not hearing about with the media. And I have full confidence in this team that they're going to win the SBC. 
straight up, they're going to win the SBC. And you know, and the reasons why I believe that largely is because of their offense, but also because of their defense. They've got a, a, a great place kicker. So even if you slow them down, stop them, they you know they they can play the field position game with you too. And eventually, they're going to break one. Their defense is good enough to slow just about everybody down that they're going to see. Now they open up this Friday night down at Bourbon A, and that's a team that I think you know Bourbon A is one of those kind of teams where it's hit or miss. About once every three, four, five years, they're really good. Uh, and this this could be their year in Bourbon A. So I, I can't honestly say that Bourbon A is going to beat them or, or lose to them. Or But I can tell you that Plainfield North, I just don't see a whole lot of teams out there that are going to be able to hang with them. You know, they only lost one game in their 7-on-7s seven seven during the summer. I mean, the timing is there. The arm is there. The receivers are there, although they did drop a few passes in, in, in the uh, the red-white game that they had on Friday night. Uh, but, you know, that that aside... Uh, this is a really good offense, and I think going to Bourbon A and traveling to Bourbon A, they'll be able to work out some of the bugs. They won't have the pressure of a home crowd on top of them, but they're already going to be jacked up. And, heck, if you're a football player and you're not jacked up for game day, there's something wrong with you. I mean, there's another sport for you, but it certainly isn't football. So if you can't get you know, you know, can't get up for a football game, uh, you know, definitely, definitely something wrong there. But getting up for the football game and getting overhyped is a big difference, and I like the fact that North is going to go and play away. I like the fact that they'll be down there because you know what? The next week they come back and they got Lockport at home. And Lockport last year beat them. And Lockport wasn't a bad football team. But I do think that the, the Tigers shot themselves in the foot in that loss. And trust me, they haven't forgotten that loss. When you're 4-5 and five and you look back at some of the teams that you should have, could have, would have beat, Lockport stands out as one of those games that there's our fifth win. I mean, that's a that's a win that we should have had, you know, and had we not had those early mistakes early in the season, you know, maybe we're looking at a playoff berth. Even if it's a bubble team berth, you're still looking at a playoff berth, and it just didn't happen for, for North last year. So this year, I don't think that's going to be the case. Their defense is above average. I wouldn't say that they're fantastic at every position, but I do think that they're above average. And, you know, I like their special teams. Special teams is one of those wild cards where we all seem to overlook it, but, you know, when you need that extra point, when when you when you're in a tight football game and you get a turnover inside their twenty and you can't move the ball, you want that kid. You want that kid that can drill that thirty, forty yard field goal and this kid can do it. You know, and then let's talk a little bit about, you know, where I think Plainfield North uh, who's gonna compete with them in their own conference. And when you look at the SBC, I think Oswego, they're gonna be a that, that that'd be a good game. I think that, that Manuka, that'd be a good game. You know, uh, Plainfield East, Plainfield, you know, all the Plainfield schools, they're always good games because they're, they're rivalries, but I just don't see anybody really taking Plainfield North out of their game. I just I just don't see it. And maybe I'm wrong, you know. It's not often that I'm wrong, and, you know, I've got my lucky eight ball that says I'm never wrong. And I, I say right now, uh, Plainfield North is going to go, uh, let's see what the lucky eight ball says. Yep, that's what I said, lucky eight ball. Eight and one. Why don't you listen to the players and the coaches and let them tell you how good they are. Check out this video. Talk to me about, first of all, you guys got some size. I mean, you're, you're the muscle on that offensive line, but you're playing defense too. And I'll, you know, uh, last time we talked to you, it was basketball season. You were, you know, coming off the court. That, but now here you are in football and, and looking like a football player. Uh, how excited are you to, put, to, to get it on? You know, I mean, after all the work, long summer, you know, and seven on sevens, you don't get a lot of work in those seven on sevens being a lineman. Yeah. You know, so how excited are you? you just got in the latest SmackDown. Yeah, I mean, we went to a lot of camps and everything, and uh, we put a lot of work in in the summer and the off season and everything. So we're hoping for big things. You know, we got a lot of seniors and everything coming back. So, you know, we got, I mean, high expectations for ourselves. You know, conference championships, deep in the playoffs and everything, even like state championships and stuff. You know, we got big expectations and big hopes, I guess. Yeah. All right, so. You know, you're a junior this year, you know, so, right? Senior. Oh, see, I'm sorry, senior, but yeah. you'll be a senior on, yeah. on, what, next Friday when you guys come back to school? Or no, Thursday? we're back in school now. You're back in school now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, excuse me, because some <laughs> of you guys are still sitting at home and not in school until you start next week. Yeah. All right, so you are officially senior. Yeah. So where do you want to go to school? Have you been talking to anybody? Um, I actually, I have one scholarship offer from uh, South Dakota to Division One AA, but um. I want to go to school somewhere on the East Coast, like Ivy League or uh, Patriot League or something like that. But, you know, anything that comes, you know, I've talked to Indiana. I went to a bunch of camps this summer and everything. So, I mean, I hope everything works out for me, and I think it will. So I just have fun. Academically, where are you academically? Um, I'm pretty good GPA? academically. Uh, GPA 4.7. Squat? Squat? Yeah. Uh, 
405 max. You gotta remember, there's a lot of scouts that are watching this tape right yeah. now. So, so what was that? 405 max. 405 max. So yeah. not not too bad. You got a good JPA. You got some good strength. Yeah. Play for a good football team. You got a hell of a running back. It's gonna yeah, make you look good if you lay some pancakes. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, you know, again. Good luck with you guys next next Friday night. Yep. You're, you're traveling out to Bourbon A, yep. and you get to come home for three weeks. Of course, yep. We're and defend your, you know, it might be nice. You know, you guys end up 4-0, you get to defend your home field, you know? Yeah. All right, hey, I'm with, I'm, I'm with the Plainfield Tigers' new uh, senior running back, because last year, you know, I can't say new running back. That isn't right, because last year you, you ran for 1,200 yards. Yeah. So, but you're not old and crusty either as a senior, because <laughs> you, you, you ain't run, this, you ain't run the, 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 the gauntlet yet. Yeah. But... You know, I've talked a lot of you know smack about how good I think you can be. You know, how good how good can you be? I mean, I, I mean, do you got that swagger? I mean, do you do you have a swagger about yourself? I mean, uh, you know, talk about your game a little bit. I mean, I'm only as good as my as my offense is. You know, so Lyman Lyman will keep blocking good as well. I mean, quarterback we have to stay balanced. You know, quarterback throws well. You know, Kirk Thomas. Uh, we got this line is, as long as our line keeps opening up holes like they normally do. Like I know they will, but I'm. I'm right run game would be pretty good. You got a good offensive line in front of you too. I mean, you got some great tackles. You can run. You can run off. But you know, once you get to the outside, uh, you got, you know, you've got breakaway speed, and you're able, and you've got the the, the strength. I think right now to to run through those arm tackles. So they're really gonna have to square up and, and to, you know in order to get you down. How much work did that take you in the off season? Oh, we we worked really hard. We worked um, all all June, all July. You know, we worked, we worked really hard all summer. You know, going to camps and seven on sevens. Those help. Those been helping a lot. But. We're working really hard in the offseason, getting our lifts in and everything. You know, getting a lot bigger and stronger than we were last year. So we're about we're ready to come out this year. You know, people ask you know who, who can we compare you to, and I won't I, I won't be unfair in comparing you anybody like a, in, in the prep league. You know, but but uh, but could I compare you to like a Bo Jackson type because you're a hell of a baseball player too. I mean, I mean, you know, talk to me a little bit about the college. You know, what what are your hopes? Are I mean, because I know you got some offers out there for for college baseball. Are you hoping to get football? Are you hoping to play maybe both? I could play. I could play both both sports in college. Yes, sir. I mean, um, if I get a good offer for football, I mean, I could walk on the baseball team. Get a good offer for baseball, walk on the football team. So I can. Go, I could go both ways. So you're gonna go to Michigan, <laughs> right? <Sure. laughs> yeah. But you'll take any school at this point, right? Yeah, Division yeah, one, right? That's yes, what you're sir. looking for is D one and yes, and uh, and get out there. What's your biggest fear for the season? Biggest fear for for you season? personally? For me personally? Yeah. Not beating my records last year. You know, yeah. I mean, I got to come back out a lot better than I did last year. You know, returning starters, senior running back. You know, I got to, you know, um, you know, keep my. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Composure. Uh, yeah, keep my composure. You know, stay stay healthy. Stay healthy for sure. Yeah, you know, I got hurt last season, pulled my groin in the middle of the season, so you know, I got to stay healthy for sure. Hey, you got you got a couple of backs too. They're they're younger, cl- they're you know, younger classmen, juniors. That are, that are, that are, that's going to take a little bit of a breather off you, be able to get you out for a play or two, just to get you know catch. Especially if you get a big a big run, you got to get that 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 breather when you're gassed. So, and it looks like they're pretty capable. I mean, like they can pick up the slack. Oh, yeah, our two younger backs are really good. We got Thank one really strong back and, you know, can run somebody Please over. We got another just really quick back and beat you to the outside the corner. You know, rough touchdown. You know, it's All right, so you, uh, last question. Are you excited? Oh, I'm pumped. I'm ready. You ready to play? I mean, because, you know, baseball is one thing. You know, you play baseball after a while, it gets repetitive. You're real good at it. Yes, but but there ain't nothing like smacking two pads going about 40 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm ready. <laughs> So I'm, I'm with uh, I'm with the Plainfield North Tigers starting quarterback, second year, Mr. Palandek. Tell me, why should people be afraid of your offense? Well, you know, we got a lot of returners to start off. You know, our running back, Jay Roberts, is back. And, you know, our line, you know, we got big boys up front. I'd say one of the bigger lines around. And, uh, you know, that's going to help for sure. But, uh, you know, the experience is, you know, it's just – being out there with the returners, you know, it's, it's something that you feel comfortable with and you feel like it's a routine now, not so much, you know, new stuff out there. How disappointed were you last year? I mean, you came off, I mean, you played as a sophomore up on varsity, you know, your older brother was out here and he was, he had the, he had the reins of the offense then, but then he had a guy named Capri Big in, in the backfield. And, you know, the expectations, I think, when you were coming in last year as a junior were quite high and there always are with, with Plainfield North Athletics. But were you disappointed with a four and five season? Oh, for sure, extreme disappointment. You know, we yeah, we were juniors, but you know, we still had our our hopes up high. You know, we had a lot of talent, and uh, you know, this year we have our expectations high as well. You know, uh, what we, was the difference last year? Some of those losses with turnovers. Uh, man. Turn, well, we're just inconsistent all around. Offensively, I, I'll take responsibility for that, and defensively, you know, I we just we just hope to play more consistent. You know, with that experience, we hope that'll come with it. 
you know, uh, you guys have really been, in all, most, of, most of you guys on this team are multi-sport kids here. I mean, you're a baseball star, you're a basketball star, you're a football star, it's your varsity season. How much pressure do you feel going into the year, or is that pressure finally gone? Like, hey, I'm here, I've paid my dues, and now well, I'm going to hang out. You know, there's always pressure just being competitive. You know, I, I put a lot of self-pressure on myself. You know, you got pressure from everywhere, but, you know, it's, it's still a game. You know, I go out there, I'm, I'm playing confident, and, uh, you know, I only can hope for the best, so I don't put too much pressure on myself or too much anything. Well, then you play, you play for the right reason, though. You play to have fun. For sure, I play. For I mean, fun. obviously, I you play win. to win, though. You yeah. play to win, right? Right. It's only, but, it's only fun if you win. So. <laughs> right, right. But uh, how how great is it going to be when you get to walk out there, you know, and uh, and your varsity year? I mean, what what what's your what's your hopes for the season? There's no better feeling than going out and get a varsity win. You know, senior year. You know, I'm hoping hoping to take it all. You know, senior year is just nothing like it. I not, can't describe. You know, it's just going to be the best feeling playing with. You know, with. Just the whole team, not just seniors alone, just juniors. You know, everyone playing together, but it's going to be a special year. Hey, Quest is gone this year, right? So uh, who's, your, who's going to be your go-to guy target-wise? I mean, who do you feel most comfortable with? You had some drop passes tonight, you know, out there, and I think they were all dropping a little. They hear them footsteps. They're saying seven-on-seven no more, right? But but who are you most comfortable yeah, with? We had right a lot now? of guys, you know, as you said, stepping up in seven-on-seven. Once you put the pads on, it's a little different. But, uh, you know, our main target is probably going to be Brock Tomes. He's running a lot of the primary routes, but, you know, uh, we got Mel Welch, who's going to step up and play Jay Koslavic. And, you know, Jay Roberts is probably going to catch some passes out of the backfield. So, you know, we got a couple of guys out there. But, yeah, Quest, you know, I really like Quest. You know, it's going to hurt. But, uh, you know, we got other guys that can play. Yeah, talk a little bit about Brock Tobin. He's a tough kid. I mean, he's a tough guy. He can play. He can probably play defense because I, I mean, he's not really a receiver. He's like a linebacker right. with hands. Yeah, you know, he he's an all-around athlete. That's all I can say about him. You know, he's a competitor. So he might be in the backfield, but I like throwing to him because, like you said, he's a tough guy. He'll be physical, but he'll probably be on defense too as well. So. All right, Kerbal. Hey, listen, you got. I'm sure you got a lot of uh, autographs to sign out there, yeah. and I got some film to edit. So we want to wish you the best this season. We'll see you a lot uh, throughout the year, and hopefully at the end of the year, and we we start talking again in, in late October. We're talking about a playoff game. For sure. Thank you. And hey, with Coach Kane, and, and you know, a week away from your first game, you got out here, you know, and and. Uh, they look pretty good. I mean, you got 19 returning stars, so it's not too difficult yeah. to, to get them going. But how difficult is it to incorporate those younger classmen into that 19, you know? Well, we're going to have some of those uh, juniors on the field for us. There's no doubt about it. And I think the great thing about this year is we have so much competition for positions. Although we've had a lot of returning starters, you know, we keep, we keep telling the kids, you know, coming off a four and five year, obviously that's not very good. So it doesn't mean too much. You still have to go out there and earn, earn your spot. We have a lot of juniors who have been doing a great job pushing guys and have earned some spots out there. But I think on the flip side of it, we've got outstanding senior leadership. Our seniors have done a great job all summer teaching the young kids how we're going to practice and what our attitude's going to be and how we're going to approach things to, you know, obviously get back to competing for conference championships, getting in the playoffs, and now winning some playoff games. Hey, Tigers are never a cupcake team anyhow, no matter if they're four and five or or, or eight and one. You know, and, and you've had some great teams in the past, but if, if you're talking to, uh, you know, the, the other SPC schools out there, specifically talk about the Bourbon A, why should they be afraid of the 2012 Plainfield Tigers? What, what, who should they, who should they be looking out for? Why are you confident in this in this yeah. group? I mean, you get some all your offensive tackles, big, huge kids. Yeah, we got some, you get some bricks. You got Jay Roberts. You got, yeah. I, I mean, it's, but, I think, I think, I think probably two things. You know, we do have some size up front, which we don't always have every year. You know, Kiefer's moved from tight end to tackle, which has made a huge difference. We got two pretty good sized tackles. Now we still got work on things. They both have plenty of things they need to work on to get better, but. You know, I think we can be pretty balanced. Like you said, we got Jay Roberts returning with almost 1,200 yards rushing. We got Kurt coming back with, I don't know, 13, 1,400 yards passing. So I think we can have a pretty balanced offense. Whereas, you know, some years we line up and we're just going to run it at you, which we may still do sometimes. You know, we try to do what we're going to have success with, depending on what the week is. But I think we can be a pretty balanced attack this year with the guys that we have coming back. Well, and if Jay Roberts goes down, it looks like you got a couple of kids there that can run with the ball. That sophomore come over, he's a junior now, number 30. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know his name, Coach, but but a little fire plug, man. Oh, it looks he, like, he's real you know, He was tough to bring down. I mean, you know, he takes the hits, and maybe he's not as quick, but he can't take him down. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Trent Cavan. Trent Cavan played a little number linebacker 20? there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did a good job. And then Robert Baker, you know, is a little bit shifty. And both of them really did a good job tonight. Both of them juniors coming up, learning about varsity football. And uh, both of them, like you said, can go in there and, and do some things. If if Jay needs a rest or breaks off a long run, we need somebody in there. I think both of them could go in there and do a nice job for us. Hey, special teams look pretty good tonight. I mean, he got a kicker this year. Yeah, he kicked. It's pretty accurate. He put and he gets the ball up. Yeah, he he did a good job. He's coming back from us for, from last year as well, and uh, he has a strong leg. He's, yeah, he does. He's been kicking all summer and really done a fantastic job. We did a few extra points and a. 
field goal tonight, and he did a pretty good job. So hopefully, you know, he can help us change the field position. As you know, that's a huge part of the game is getting the field position in your favor. And with him being able to kick off, um, and I think we have a pretty good punter. You know, he wasn't out here tonight, but uh, we didn't have him pump. But to be able to help us flip the field sometimes is going to be a, a big difference. How much confidence do you have in your defense this year? Offensively, I think everybody knows that you're going to be tough well, offensively. Defensively, though, are you, are you going to be able to keep teams out of the I end really, zone? I'm, I was really the most disappointed. <laughs> Obviously, you're four and five. You're not real happy with very many things. But our defense, we just weren't very good last year. We didn't cover people. We didn't stop the run. We weren't very physical. And those are things I think in the past we've at least been able to line up and, and play tough, hard-nosed football. So that's something we've stressed all summer long. Um, you can't tell from a scrimmage. Obviously, we came out and we hit pretty well. I think we do have a lot of kids who are physical kids and tough kids. But uh, we'll find out next week when we take the field and it counts for real. You know, when you get in a little bit of adversity, when you get in a little tough situation, if they if they break a big play, how are you going to respond? How are you going to play? And are your seniors going to step up and say, hey, we're going to buckle it up a little bit tighter and they're not getting in the end zone. So we feel like we've improved, but you really don't know until you get out there. In two non-conference games uh, last year, uh, you, know, you know, I won't talk too much about Bourbon because you got them next week, and it is what it is. Uh, but you know, you got Lockport coming yeah. here, and uh, that was a great game last year. And you guys had the lead in that game. Yeah. You know, does that stick in your crawl a little bit? Because those non-conference <laughs> games, you know, and it's not so much whether it be Lockport or anybody, but yeah. just a non-conference game in general. When you drop those, how bad does that hurt in a, in a conference like the just, SBC? I think any coach will tell you it's nice to start out two and zero. You know, it's nice to get a couple wins under your belt and learn from your mistakes, but build a little bit of momentum before you get into the conference play. And you know, obviously, last year we had a lead in that game. We had some turnovers. That was a nutty you know, game. We had a uh, block yeah. punt there. The the end. So we had a couple huge mistakes that absolutely killed us. And we know Lockport's going to be a good program. You know, they got big kids. They got good athletes. They got 4,000 kids in school. So we're going to have to be ready to go. But it is going to be a home opener. And I think our kids are going to respond real well to that and uh, be ready to go this year. Is Jay Roberts as good as Capri Bibbs? Um, they're different types of runners. I mean, I you know, I don't know if you can really compare until you really get the season going. You know, Capri was obviously a good player as a junior, but then as a senior, he just exploded, you know, and improved like most kids do from their junior to their senior year. I can tell you Jay um, has looked outstanding during two days. I mean, he really looks like a lot better runner than what he was last year in terms of his vision and in terms of his ability to make some moves and his speed. So, once again, we'll see once you get out there. Sometimes you do that against your own kids, and it's one thing, but we got to go play somebody and find out. But Jay is a very all-around back. We can throw the ball to him. He runs good routes. He has great hands. He blocks well. Very unselfish, you know. So he's he, he's doing a nice job for us, and certainly going to be a big part of our offense. Hey, you guys smoked a lot of teams in seven on sevens over the summer. I mean, how much how much credit do you give to that? You know, just to you know, look at your defensive backs and in your, in your throwing game. I mean, you guys you guys were pretty much t- tough to beat all summer. Yeah, we played. You know, we went to uh, Bowling Green. We won that tournament over right. there. We went to Central Michigan. We lost in overtime. Um, I don't know. I'm not real happy tonight. We didn't catch the ball very well. We had way too many drops. I thought Kurt threw the ball very well. Put it but, there. Uh, Obviously, in the summer, we caught the ball pretty well. And that's different. Seven on seven, you're not hitting people. So you, you, these receivers better figure out now you're going to get hit and tackled and those types of things. But um, That was a great I, line that you said, too, to the kids. Hey, you don't catch, you ain't getting the ball. Well, that's how we operate. And that's the truth. <laughs> right. We'll move whoever we need to move in whatever formation. If that kid's catching the ball, that's who we're going to you know, give the ball to. And those kids, it, but how it works, too, kids then respond to that and say, hey, sure. Mom and I want to make sure I get the ball. Now they ratchet up their play. And once again, going back to what I said, it's just competition for jobs. And they realize... Well, hey, I want to catch the ball, so now they start working a little bit harder, concentrate a little bit more. So, you know, I, I, we have some good athletes out here, but we need obviously work on a few things. But I think the other thing you alluded to, it really helped our, our defensive backs as much as anything in the summer. You know, run some different coverages and cover some people. And like I said last year, we didn't cover very well at all. You did good tonight. We did a lot better. We break it on the ball a lot better. You know, we made some adjustments on motion. Kept the guys in front of them, right, yeah. yeah. A lot better. we got to do those things. Obviously, we're going to play good athletes and good quarterbacks, so we're going to have to be able to do that. So it was nice to see us uh, progress from the summer into the hitting phase and still be able to play in the defensive backfield. Yeah, and, you know, you, you've always talked, you know, this is a playoff football team every year. Yeah. It's, it's an expectation here yeah. at North to make the playoffs, not a hope. I would and, uh, and and so knowing that, uh, you know, you, you got to be you got to get really good because you're in a really tough conference. And once yeah. you get outside of uh, of your conference and then you're in this, you know, in 7A yeah. and, you gotta, and you're picking up somebody like Glenbard West or, yeah. or, uh, or a Lincoln Way East or something, you know, you just don't know who you're going to draw, but you're going to pick somebody big. For sure. And uh, so how, how important is what was that 7-on-7 seven seven just to see, you know, so what some of these other great teams have got, you know, Absolutely. and can we run with them? Is, is that confidence helpful at all? In the, I think it in is. Early? But I think then that has to transpire during the season. You have to continue to win games and yeah. build that momentum and then go play those teams and be confident going in and be able to be a balanced attack you know you play the teams that you mentioned you can't go in there and be one-dimensional because they're gonna they're gonna shut you down you know so you have to be able to be 
multifaceted with formations and, and running and passing those types of things. But I, I think you're absolutely right. We talk to our kids all the time. We expect to compete for conference titles. We expect to get in the playoffs. And that's just how hard you better work, and that's how dedicated you better be and how committed you better be. And our kids have been. You know, we've over the years we've improved you know, each year until last year. Last year was really the first year we kind of took a step back. It was very disappointing. And our kids have talked about, hey, we're going to do something that other seniors haven't done, you know. So get a home playoff game, you know, more wins, whatever whatever the case may be. Go deeper in the playoffs, you know, whatever the case may be. So those kids have their goals and are focused on that. And I think that's important for them to think about that in the big picture. But also in order to do that, you have to do your job every play. Every play you have to be focused and disciplined and committed to doing your job. You can't think five weeks down the road, you know, somebody's going to sneak up on you if you start thinking like that. You still get butterflies before the first week? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You get something before tonight. You know, you're coming out here and your kids are playing and scrimmaging. It's different than being on your practice field. You're under the lights. You're on your stadium field, and it's a little bit different energy level and that type of stuff. So, oh, for sure, you, you have that anxious moment where you're just excited for the game. You're excited for your kids to go play somebody different. You know I mean? We've... Like you said we've been doing it all summer, you know, the seven on sevens in June and some camps in uh, July, and now playing our own guys all August. So it's, it's going to be the anxious, excited of let's get off the bus and let's test ourselves and let's challenge ourselves and see how good we can play tonight. A lot of great coaches have never won a state title. You know, John Ivalo said at Bowlingbrook last year when he won the state title finally after years and years of coaching, you know, that, uh, you, you know, he said it's all about the kids. Part of it secretly is probably a little bit about me too, because you you all want to win. Everybody wants to win. I think everybody wants to compete I mean, for sure. How, how you know how how much weight do you give that? I mean, do you, do you guys even talk about a state championship at the beginning of the season? Like you know, some teams set their goals at you know yeah. a, a playoff win, but then yeah. there are other teams like like JCA or a Providence who say we want to win the state championship. Right. Is that a goal that's reasonable for your guys at the beginning of the year? I think it is. You know, I mean, our kids talk about that. And like I said, that's what I'm talking about taking new steps in our program. You know, we've won a conference title. We've been to the playoffs. We've had back-to-back seasons of seven wins. And now it's time to take that next step. And you can't just say, well, I'm going to take just one step. I mean, our kids have worked hard and put in the time, and why not be able to go as far as anybody sure. else? And I think that's the attitude that they have. Obviously, as, as coaches, that's the attitude we have. I mean, I don't think you ever go into a season saying, yeah, I don't know who we can beat this team, beat that team. You go in every week, you better prepare and put your best team out there and bust your tail as coaches and as players to be prepared for that week. And then you do that week and week and week, and hopefully good things happen to you throughout the year. But I think... 100% what you said when he said you, you you have to have players to be able to do that. Players who are committed, players who have the right attitude, and obviously you have to have t- some talented players to do that too, and then coaches have to put in the time. So it's a it's a mix of everybody working together. Who's the one kid that you think that fans don't know about, guys like me don't know about? Who's that one that one or two players that you think, hey, come talk to me in week four, yeah. and, 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 I'll, and I'll give you his name? Yeah. Um, uh, maybe Colin, you got a couple of those Colin, guys. Yeah, Colin Holt, maybe. You know, Colin Holt's playing some defensive back force. He played a little bit of linebacker force last year, and a little bit of defensive back. I think he's had an outstanding summer, and I think he's definitely flying under the radar a little bit. And I think uh, Brett Fox. You know, Brett's been a three-year starter for linebacker this year. Yeah, linebacker. He finished the season playing some linebacker last year, but he, he's a little bit under the radar too. Although he's been a three-year starter, so I think I think those are going to be a couple of names where people are going to all of a sudden kind of know who they are. Been a production of SouthwestSportsNest.com, home of the playmakers and game changers. Remember, do your best. Get on the nest.